new project. We're going to make a fancy square light bulb. Okay. Complex cube. Once we have that, that's literally, I mean, the, the, main, the main point of making materials or making, uh, we can add any object we want. So I start with something like a cylinder, okay? Um, so with a cylinder, of course, I can set my sizes to anything I like, la da la la la. I'm sure you've worked this much out. The next, thing I, the next thing I need to do is, I could make it editable, but that's not crucial. The next thing I need to do is just add a light to my scene, okay? So to do that, I click on the light button and I just want the regular lights. That is traditionally called an Omni light in Cinema 4D. So now we have a light. You'll see that everything's gone black. Why is everything black? Because the light is inside my volume. When I pull it out the volume, I get a light. When I put it back inside, it's dark. Okay? Out, inside. Out, inside. So if I want light to come out of this thing, creating a light is very straightforward, right? All I have to do is click the light button and I get a light. And the only reason you might not see it is because it's inside your object. But the problem is now it's inside my object. How do I make my object transparent? That's the real question. So that's about creating materials. Um, do you have this thing at the bottom of your screen? This here uh, creation, creation window? Create new material. Okay, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So this is where you have to pay attention. So to create a transparent material, you need to go to create new material, click on the material, You'll see this basic color reflectance illumination, but none of these seem to be doing what we want. So we need to go to basic. And in basic, we need to make sure that transparency is selected. Once I do that, you'll see that my material automatically looks like air or smoke or something. So if I go to my transparency, you'll see that the, the brightness of the transparency layer is at 100%. So the lighter I make that, you can start to see kind of the form of the glass bulb over there, okay? So that's almost transparent. The other thing is glass generally has some kind of color. Nothing is like perfectly white. So you see I'm kind of giving a little bit of transparency material. You'll see that there's a refraction preset here. So all, all objects, or all liquids, solids, glasses, when light comes through them, it changes direction a little bit, okay? And so when you look at, if you put your hand into water, you'll see your hand looks like it's broken underwater, right? Because that's refraction at work. So we can choose a setting for refraction. So here we can go ahead and just choose something like um, water. Okay. So there we have water refraction. We can probably make this a little bit more transparent if we're trying to get cleaner glass. Up to you guys. The you pick the color, you pick how dirty the glass is. You can increase the blurriness if you want. And then reflectance. Here we can change the reflectance. We can bring it down. That's pretty much all you need to do here. Illumination, nothing. Color, nothing. Once I've got that, I've got some kind of low quality glass material. You can also download materials for Cinema 4D from the internet. They exist. I can click on that material and I can drag it onto my object. Okay, that's it. Click and drag, and now you'll see it's transparent. And now when I hit render, I have some strange, strange, strange experience with the light because the glass object in front of that it's in is kind of bending the light around. Let's put an object behind this so you can see what's going on. Put a cube back there. Something like this, okay? So you can see that there's two layers, and uh, I'll, I'll show you exactly why it's refract, what's happening when it's refracting. So you can kind of see it, the cube bending through there. Now we can go back to our cylinder, um, and even go just to our material settings, actually. And uh, we can make the transparency even stronger. You can drop the refresnel if you want. 
Fresnel will make it seem like it's refracting things from the glass and the environment around it. Its refractions are set, its absorption colors are set. And now we can re redo a render. So this is like looking at a block of ice right now, okay? So what we can do is click on our cylinder, make it editable, and then uh, we go to faces. Let's see. Tools. So I'm just I open the thing up so that you you know so there's a hole in the top. Create uh, tools. Mesh, commands, use something like a smooth shift. Smooth shift is just a thicken tool, and so I'm going to thicken this inwards. Some of your uh, offset ten centimeters. So there you go. You have some thickness now, and if we look at this as a render, you see that you really start to get that experience of. Uh, You can see the, the, the object through the glass as we're setting it up in that way. Um, let's make the light more obvious. So the light right now is just kind of piddly. It's not doing anything. Its intensity is very hard. It's got no shadows being thrown. So let's make it throw shadows. So watch this. Shishi. Set the shadow type to soft. Luna, you want to watch this as well. Um, if you want the dust to come off of your objects, Select from visible light, from none, select volumetric, okay? Now there's that sphere around it that creates the light being thrown away. Um, go to details, here, you can set the contrast to 100%. You can change the fall off to inverse square. So what is fall off? Fall off is... Uh, all of it is the distance as the further light gets away from the source, the softer it gets. And that's actually how light works, right? The, it dissipates into the environment. And so you need the fall off to be turned on. And you can change the density or the radius. So we can make that 100 centimeters, for example. And so now, like, the radius of that fall off is only inside the bulb. But we could make it bigger, and the bigger we make it, the more intensely it affects the things around it. Okay? Do something like this. And then we can hit re-hit our render button. And you can see that our light our light settings are really changing now. And if we really look into the jar, move this piece. Once we've got that, we can redo the render and you can have a look. So the light is now really intense and it's kind of taking over the, the thing. And so we can go back to our light and uh, to our general settings. And here we can start to play with the intensity, with the color, um, how visible it is, how much shadow it throws. All right. Any other questions about lighting? Just adding light. If you, for example, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but maybe you want to do this. You want to open a. Here, we'll open this camera. So we want to open this camera, and for some reason, in this camera, you want to make um, some of the eyeballs more. You want to make this here, like for example, a beam of light. Might be something you want. Um, 
So guys, have a look at this. This is this is what happens when you use the um, when you use the different type of light. We've been using the regular light. We can use the spotlight right now. And you see, the spotlight has a direction, and um, we can rotate that spotlight around. There you go, 180. And so you can see where the spotlight's coming straight out of there. It just magically happens to be there, but sometimes you may have to adjust its uh, may have to adjust its location. So something like this, a spotlight. And I'm going to create a custom cube, this fancy cube I have here. Uh, so there you go. And so now when we render, you'll see that there's obviously just a, a spot cube. But if we put another area light, if we just put a kind of air, uh, if we just put a an infinite light in here, Turn on a render again. I don't know why I chose infinite light. I'm sorry. Um, just if you put a regular omni light here. You can make it really, really subtle if you want, so that it's not so intense. So it only affects that. You can go to your visibility or your fall off, fall off inverse squared. Make that nice and tiny. So it just, just, just affects the thing that's around. Okay. So now when we hit render, we'll see there's a little lamp there, and you'll see that the lamp is some kind of supposed to be shooting some kind of uh, light. But just so you know, light comes out of the actual object because that's just the way it works. How do we fix that? Of course, we can go to our, our light itself and we can do exactly what we did before. General, we can say shadow type, soft, visibility, volumetric. And go to details and you can have a look at these details. Again, some kind of fall off is always good. So let's have a look at this now. And so now you can see the kind of lamp, it, the light itself shooting light. Yes? Of course, you can increase the visibility distances. Um, if you go to visibility, that's exactly talking about fall off. Um, you can change the inner distance if you don't want it to start right by the camera. But there you can see there's kind of like a directionality now from the camera to the just a different light using a different component but it might be a way if you like think about your character having glowing eyes or moving it might be a way to do it. any more questions so on Wednesday this is what guys this is what I want for Wednesday I want a character that you're ready to talk about materials with basic material application on Wednesday, we're going to do an in-class like charrettes about material application and how we pick materials for our renders. Um, I'm going to sit with each of you, hopefully individually, and um, just give you some feedback of where you're at for the project so far. So you need to make some big strides for Wednesday, okay? So some nice characters, some nice development. You can, um, of course, remember to submit the homework, the urban light homework. Um, but other than that... That's all I have for you today. Um, unless you have some questions about... Uh